Well, the oh, we're live, but the intro song's still downloading. Downloading. So I'm going to wait. Like it's, it's going pretty quick. So everyone that's live, what up? Hold on a GIF. Okay. I think we're good. Oh, that's not even it, is it? I don't know. Here we, here we go. And on your mark, get set, go. Donaldson signed with the team, and Frazier signed with another team. Chirinos, he signed with the team. Cora and Beltran, they got let go from their teams. we got a lot to talk about. Let's talk some baseball. Not our no- normal song, right? No. I don't know what song this is. I like Normally, it. it's like the brown, brown, chicka, brown out. No, that's brown, chicka, brown out. My old line of work. Yeah, I don't know what song that was, but it is a Mike Rotano song. So thanks, it's, Mike Rotano. He makes all our boogie. music. Yeah. We are coming to you live. Patrons, they're watching live. We got Patrick Bishop in the chat. P Bish, how's the levels? How's the audio? Let us know. Keep us in tune. We are in the Bronx, guys. We are at John Boy Media HQ. Wow. I've never referred to it as that. Yeah, that's new. We've just been going office, office, office. Yes. John Boy Media, the John Boy Media Hangout, because it's kind of like an apartment office split. But we're here. We don't have, like, you know, our regular tables, our regular equipment. We don't have anything going. We have a laptop on top of a Pelican case. But we're here. I hope you can hear us. Hope everyone's doing well. We're excited. This episode is brought to you by some special patrons. Are you ready to hear who they are? Okay. Andrew. Scott Banta. Banta. Michael Morgan. Christian Villegas. 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 And, and Susan O'Brien, a.k.a. Papa Breath. That's my mother. I know who that is. She joined because she thought the live show in Santa Monica was going to be live streamed. Ah, got her. She was going for the live show. <laughs> so thank you all our patrons who support us. John Boy Media, patreon.com slash John Boy Media. I mean, you, you sincerely helped us get here and get to an office. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Jake is in town. He was apartment hunting. Mm. I think he caught her. Apartment hunted. Yeah, Done. got one. Um Going to have to do double lease for a month. Luckily, Denver and New York are two of the cheaper cities you'll find. So that's good news. Um, but yeah, I found a place. Excited to get in there. Um, Going to be doing Denver slash spring training for like a month and a half. And then I'm, I'm a city rat. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a while until you are organized and like in flow in the city. Well... You're good. It'll be never till I'm organized. Yeah, you're good traveling. It'll be never till I'm organized. But yeah, it's exciting. Uh, City folk. So, and now I'm excited for baseball. Oh, I'm getting so excited for baseball, man. Pitchers are, it's not spring training yet, but they're starting to throw. They're starting to like do their little workouts. They're starting to Instagram. Yeah. yeah, Baseball players are starting to Instagram. There's a couple levels. It's the Instagram spring training and then spring training and then the games. And we're in Instagram spring training right now. It's nice. I enjoy it. At the first video of a guy swinging a bat in the cages, yeah, and you hear the crack of the bat, that always goes viral. They're like, oh, "I love that sound." Well, know what it is. So right now we're getting Instagram videos, which we'll we'll take because it, it's been dry baseball wise. Then we're gonna hit actual spring training, and we're gonna be yoked. We're gonna yeah. be out of our minds. Then comes the third week of days. games of spring training. Yeah, I like, think it's two and a half. Yeah. I was going two and a half, and you're just like, okay, yeah, I. Yeah, everyone sees that the last three guys on the 40, man, it seems like they're getting 100 at-bats, um, and then you just want the real stuff. But it, do you think it'll sneak up a little more? Because doesn't the season start late March? Yeah, but last year did two, I think, the 28th yeah. or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll, cool. Yeah. I, I will say this. The last three episodes we did was an impromptu reaction to the Astros getting uh, their penalties because they were proved as cheaters. A lot of Astros fans are forgetting mm. that it's been proven. Then we did the live show with Jack Flaherty. Thank you to everyone who came out or who yeah, listened. It's awesome. Then we did impromptu buzzer session with Ploof. So it's a lot of, a lot of Astros talk. A lot and of live stuff. For people that are sick of it, the back half of this show is probably going to be you know more Astro stuff because we have gotten just even crazier with Beltron being let go, Core being let go, 
uh, the buzzer stuff we talked about, but there's a lot of other stuff going on. The Astros finally made their first appearance, and yeah. Bregman and uh, and what's his name? Bregman Al- and Altuve. Altuve? Jose Talk- Altuve. Yeah, they talked about it. So we'll get into that. In the meantime, yeah, there has been baseball. That like I'm excited to talk about that. Yeah. That's what this show is. We aren't just what the controversy. Like, hey, if What's all this wasn't happen, this would be the headliners. What's the name of the and show? W- it's talking baseball. Ah, ah. Did you watch the uh, the championship games yesterday? Ugh. Feels like a trap. That's a trap. <laughs> Feels Don't like a it. trap. So we we do Mahomes. Have- His dad, the former baseball player. Yeah, I'm talking about him. Yeah, okay, pitcher. Well, all right. Well. We do have some news. It's not really, this this isn't working on my phone. Okay. The twins have reportedly agreed to your a, twins. Yeah. Twins reportedly agreed to a four year, ninety two million dollar contract with free agent third baseman Josh Donaldson. We knew they had a four year deal out there, and I think on this show, you and I both kind of said. He's not going to the Twins. Because if he was going to the Twins, he would have accepted that. He's waiting for the Nationals or the Braves. So we're both wrong. Well, I think, I don't know if the Twins sweeten the pot. It does seem like this option for the fifth year helps out. It's said to include a $16 million club option for fifth fifth season, but a $8 million buyout. So if you're fresh to baseball and you're like, what the hell does that mean? Or sports contracts in, in general. If he's really good and... The market says that 38-year-old Josh Donaldson is going to earn more than $16 million a year because he was so good in his 38-year-old year. The Twins get him for $16 million. They can just say, nope, we got him. You can't go make more money. If he's really bad and he starts aging by the time he's 38 and they say, we don't want you, they buy him out for $8 million. Which would be, and not a math pod, but I just realize that is four for 100 yeah <laughs> i, I yeah. didn't do the 92 plus eight until now and i was like ah four for 100 yeah so four for 100 or five for 108 something like that yeah yeah Un- like, unless they have the eight million guaranteed as part of the 92 so good what are your thoughts because i you're not a twin hater you're a, you're a twin realist until they show until they show you something else well i think I think I, I think I don't know if I said this about Frazier Donaldson, but I, I and then you tweeted it, but it was the same thought. Like they give he gives them a certain edge. Donaldson comes with an attitude. It's dumb sports radio, but f- he's one of the few guys that you can genuinely say that about. Yeah, like a little bit of a hardo, and the Twins kind of need that. Yeah, I remember like when they asked someone on the in, in Atlanta media asked like, "What do you bring to the team?" And he just said, "Look at the back of my baseball card." Boom. And it's like okay, kind of a douche answer, kind of a correct answer. We meant we meant like your stuff to put in your locker. I'm what the, do you I'm the physically guy, bring the, to the field? I'm the clubby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you out. You want me to you bring your cards? cards? Jeez, seems ridiculous. Yeah, I like it, man. I, I think it's odd. I, I I would love to know the nitty gritty. Did like that option really seal it? Did no one else even come close? Yeah, and that's uh, we're going to talk about Todd Frazier signing with the Rangers. And you mentioned the teams that were involved in Donaldson. I, I think. I feel like he and baseball was hoping a little bit that the Rangers would throw a Hail Mary at him. Um, yeah, the Braves and the Nats, it just never... When the Nats signed those two... I mean, they have, what, three utility guys that can now play third base if they need to? Castro, Ascrabs, Ascrabs, and... Howie Kendrick. I, I don't think he can really play third base, but in our heads, let's he say can he try. can. try. He could try his hardest and do his best, and he'd be all right. Yeah. I, Howie Kendrick could survive a game at third base. That's my hot take today. Damn. Um, and then the Braves, I don't know. The Braves is interesting. I mean, it felt like they had him on that short deal, and that was the decision they made. They made all these moves at the start of spring training, and it was you, we were wondering if they were going to drop the Donaldson bomb. Um, apparently not, because, I, I mean, the price, the end of this contract could be an ugly one, right? Like, Donaldson has an injury history. He's already old. I mean, his last year is going to be, what, age 37 the option is 38 something like that yes yes so i i mean there is a chance i mean that's a that's a tough age for a guy with an injury history that's playing a tough position i mean you know nelson cruz is the dh now maybe you 
Donaldson can end his career at first or DH or something like that. Uh, but for now, I mean, this team, tech, this te- not technically, this team set the record for most home runs by a major league team in a season. And they had a dude, a guy that's won an MVP award. I mean, he's a little past that, but he's still a great baseball player. His defense is also really good. Um, it allows them to move uh, Sano to first. Um, and Donaldson will play a borderline gold glove third base um, next to Polanco. That's a really strong left side of the infield. So good for the Twins. I think the one thing that scares you if you're a Twins fan, and maybe we can help Twins fans cope here, Jim, and this will be a nice way to get you back in good graces with the Twins fans. They are a little righty heavy. Their lefties are Kepler and Rosario, which, hey, Kepler had a huge year last year. If he can repeat that, that's cool. Um, Rosario is... This is pretty Jake stuff, but Steady Eddie. Um, steady Eddie. He's going to give you an 800 on the nose OPS, and he'll be a lefty bat. Um, but I think right now the middle of that lineup is uh, Donaldson, Sano, Nelson Cruz. And I think there's a, the other guy that scares you is a righty. I'm blanking right now. but um, So a little righty heavy in the middle, but the Yankees have been doing that for a couple of years. They've been okay, so... Um, I like it for the Twins. How about, how about the Twins being well, able to sign dudes? Yeah, it's cool for them. Yeah. I think what's, what's interesting, and we kind of have to discuss, because it's all the same conversation, is that Sano has been their third baseman, moves to first base, and they just extended him. They yeah. kind of bought out the arbitration years. Is that correct? Yeah. I think so. Where is and it? good for him, Three man. Three-year extension. The deal guarantees Sano $30 million. That includes a $3 million buyout in 2023. Which or an option at fourteen million. So I mean, he ended so up it's ten million a year. That's he, like the standard now. They're did, just giving guys ten million a year. Did he? Through end, their whatever. Did he end up at high A the year before? <laughs> yeah, they I know. Sent, they sent I know, him all the way down. It was it was because he was friendly with the guy. I mean, he would have yeah. just been at AAA or whatever. But hey, going from sent to the minors, lost in baseball, to the next year you're signing a good extension. Good for the Twins because he was a huge prospect for him. He was one of the few 80 power grade prospects that ever come out. Him and Gary Sanchez were in the same 16-year-old free agent signing class from Dominican Republic. Those were the two top guys. Didn't they go to a town dance and they were both there? Yes, yes. They danced with each other. Everyone thought it was going to be a big fight. Uh, you know, all the girls they, are going to want to dance with Gary. No, all the girls are going to want to dance with Sano. They spend the whole dance dancing together. And then, yeah, they, baseball. Kind of, they yeah. went face to face and people thought, is this going to, oh, whoa, oh my God. dance off? Is wow. this going to happen? And they're just talking. And then they just had a firm, firm handshake. So it worked out. So yeah. good for them. It was a sight. I mean, yeah, we got some videos sent in. The national Allegedly. All of that's alleged. You yeah. have a video sent in, actually, you just said at the end there. So we'll, you'll release that then. Uh, allegedly, I had a video sent in. Okay, allegedly. What also conversation that I want to have around this Donaldson signing is the Snow moves. He gets extended. The Rangers pick up Todd Frazier, who we said was going to fall once Donaldson fell. And I'm not sure if that's the order of operations there. Maybe Frazier went first. I wasn't that tuned in. Todd Frazier signs a one-year deal for $5 million. Uh, there's a club option uh for 5.7 million for next season or a 3.5 million dollar buyout so basically he's guaranteed eight and a half million dollars for one season of playing with the rangers are you i mean todd i've met todd he's uh from tom's rivers like you know i'm i lived in that area so i'm oh oh i am always rooting for todd frazier one yeah. of the nice guys in baseball and i have nothing against josh donaldson I'm rooting for Todd Frazier to have a better year than Josh Donaldson because the price, oh. the price is so funny. Oh, um, that that would be that's that's a spicy meat to ball if that yeah. happens. Everyone, everyone wanted the Rangers to get Donaldson because they're going all in. They're getting right. all these people. They're having the new stadium, and then they're like, he's too expensive. And they get Todd for five million dollars. Yeah, I mean, I'll let you root for that. You've met Todd Frazier. <laughs> Pride of Tom's River, I, I, New Jersey. I guess I'm always There's, rooting for Todd. Frazier. This is this that was bias. Um, good for Todd. Um, I'll say that. I mean, last year was the example of that group of M- Todd Frazier is that group of MLB free agents last year that were just between a rock and a hard place. They were the group of guys getting calls from teams on the same day after not hearing from anyone for months. Um, they were in that middle middle class, whatever you want it kind of later in their career free agents that were getting love. Good for him, man. And I, I mean, if you're a Texas, if you're a Texas Rangers fan, 
I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, you're not giving a fist pump necessarily. You should for the quotes and some of the fun stuff he'll bring to the dugout. I mean, baseball-wise, you're going to get a dude who's solid. Um, you know, if, if a pitcher makes a mistake, he's going to hit it. His, his numbers at the end of the year are going to be solid, and he'll be stable for you at third base. And uh, that's all they're asking for him with a one-year, five mil with an option. Yeah, go Todd, go. Enjoy it. Hot-ass Texas, though. Far from home. It's hot. It is hot there. I was going to say it's a hitter's park, but we don't know with the new stadium. We don't know. We don't know. Joey Gallo took some swings. Did anyone track those? Someone did. The line order Shields was over there, then they traded him. Tough. Yeah, tough break. Easton athlete, just like us. Yes. Not officially. Unofficially, officially. Just like that. The next. So no Gary Sanchez story. It's unofficially official. The next story, or the next big name to come off the board, was also picked up by the Texas Rangers, Torinos. He signs for $6.75 million deal, five point seven in salary, plus at least a $1 million buyout. So less money than Todd Frazier signed for, or they can pick him up for $6.5 million the next year. So guaranteed $5.75 million. For Chirinos to go to the Rangers. Is he going to be their starting catcher? Yeah, I, I believe so. And uh, we've got a couple fun things going on here, Jim. Um, a, I think I'm almost going to copy and paste my Todd Frazier speech, but for catcher. Like, <laughs> Chirinos, we're, you're, we're not going to end the season and be like, wow, Chirinos banged out 30 homers and hit 280. Like, no, that's not going to happen. But he's a stable body behind the plate. And, Jim, this is one of your favorite things in sports. I kind of made that up. but Well, we'll see. Maybe it is. He's coming over from Houston, the former catcher. So, we A, yes, <laughs> we've had all the Houston stuff leak, and we got information that way. But, I mean, Robinson Chirinos dealt with that whole pitching staff. He knows those dudes on the team. He'll look out for some cameras and bangs. Oh, okay, that was a cheap one for you guys to laugh at your desk. You didn't laugh, and I appreciate that. Uh, but he's a solid guy to play catcher. Uh, someone on on the on Reddit did the Texas two step, Ooh. where you go from the Rangers to the Astros to the Rangers. Like you you do Mavericks, three of them, Spurs, Rockets. No, Jake. Stars. This is baseball only, and get ah. it through that thick head of yours. Ah. Damn. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That cat outside like that one. But the Texas two step was like twelve players that have done it, and Torino did like a true one. Yeah, Rangers. Direct. Astros. Direct. Direct. Staying in that Texas heat. Uh, interesting to see how Torinos does. I mean, it's not that good, right? What are you looking at? Is this Texas Texas depth chart? What, yeah. What's it look like? Do you like this team? Let's see. The, the Rangers depth chart now because two new guys. Frazier's at third. Andrus at shortstop. Odor. Andrus and Odor still at it, huh? Yeah, right. Uh, Guzman. At Guzman. first, Guzman. He was the guy that always kills the Yankees. Like yeah. his dad was in the stands. Yeah, he had three homers. Three homers. <laughs> Bullshit. Fuck you, Guzman. Good for him. Yeah, good for you. Joey Gallo in right, Santana in center, and Calhoun. Willie. That's what this says. Slick Willie. I don't know. Um, could be fun. That doesn't scare me as much. Yeah, but I, they need like one upgrade at the plate. Yeah, but their pitching staff's pretty good. Kluber. Minor, Lynn, Gibson, Lyle. It's, it's a fun pitching. Their pitching staff could either be like, wow, you know who's second in the AL in pitching this year? The Texas Rangers. Yeah. Or we're going to be like, <laughs> things fell apart for it's, Lance, it's, Minor, and... It's balanced. Like, you know, I don't think they are going to win. You know, they're, I don't think they're going to be in the top five of like, we have the best one, two, three. I don't think they're going to be in the top three of we have the best one, two, three, four, well, that's, five. That's what, but it's balanced. They have that's you know, what I'm going. If for. everyone has their best year, I want them great. all. Great. I want them all either to be great or tank. I don't want like oh three were good, two were bad. Like everyone turn it on or everyone turn it off. Yeah, I, I kind of I like their rotation because I like proven guys. Or like you know that that guy can troll it. Let's take a <laughs> chance. Torino's was like, guys, hear me out on this. New stadium, camera. <laughs> Trust me on this one. It works. It would be easier, <laughs> I'm telling you, just, if we knew. Just build it in the new stadium. Yeah. Anything else we have? Nationals re-signed Daniel Hudson. The deal's worth $11 million with up to $1 million in performance bonuses. Good for both of them. 
good for both of them. I will say, like, Daniel Hudson was great for them. Yeah. His, his, his like, career still isn't like, you got to sign that right. guy. <laughs> but he was great for them last year, so I think he's earned this contract. And the Nationals rebuilt their bullpen, dude. It's good. It's like uh, they have one of the better bullpens. They got a lot of arms. Bring me that Nats pen. Because we both were blanking on who else. Doolittle and Hudson. Yeah. Those were their guys and, in the and, playoffs. And Harris. Well, Harris. That's who I was thinking of. That's what you were thinking Harris of. Harris is a good signing. Doolittle, Harris, Hudson, Rainey. Rainey won our hearts over a little bit in the playoffs. So, so yeah. in, this, uh, in this contract with Hudson, he has an incentive uh, where he can reach up to a million dollars or something, and it all depends on games finished. So look for the Nationals to play some shenanigans over uh, Hudson's not in the closer role anymore. You know, stuff like that. That's kind of a fun one, though, because I feel that's one of those positions you don't... You don't... F- I, I know you're saying you mess around with, but, like, if Hudson wins the oh, closer job it, yeah. and he starts rolling, you pay that you million dollars. It's not a debate. Like, yeah. you're not... <laughs> You're not going to start teasing. It's almost worth it. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, exactly. That's like a really good well, option. All right, what, if, what if he's terrible, right? Okay. He's having a bad half. Dig. And he's dropped down t- to like mop up duty. Okay. And they have him oh. pitch everything but the last out. Oh, you can't have a guy just make one out. Yeah, you can. Oh, his final out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, watch out for Daniel Hudson going bad, going to mop up duty, but the Nationals won't let him finish games. Yeah, <laughs> ten nothing, Hudson. You get the seventh, eighth, ninth, and two thirds. Uh, we don't want to burn you out. <laughs> we don't want to burn that arm. <laughs> uh, the only other signing I have here that I thought was worth talking about because I think you have an interesting spin here. The Tigers announced that they have signed righty Ivan Nova. It's a one-year deal with a $1.5 million guarantee and 500 k in incentives, so he can make up to $2 million. Jake, do you want to roll with this? Because he was part of your Someday Bundy. Someday you will find me caught beneath the landslide with the Tigers Ivanova throwing strikes. Yeah, I mean, here's my thing. Ivan Nova, I think his career ERA is like 4-3-2, something like that. Um, I think his ERA last year was 4-7-2, something like that. And he started 34 games last year, I believe. So He's durable. So, I, it, and this this was my whole Dylan Bundy speech that got me outed as an uh, Angels hater, even yeah. though I kind of like the Angels. No, no, you hate I him. hated the Dylan Bundy trade. They traded four prospects, even though they're not huge prospects. They're bodies you could have worked in in other trades to get Dylan Bundy, who's making $5 million Ew. this year. <laughs> Nova <laughs> is making $2 million with incentives? No, no, $2 million is the max. If he doesn't hit the That's incentives. What, uh, with everything. Yeah. So, and that's just where I sit. If you're the Angels, I feel like go go get a reliever with those four prospects. Hey, maybe Dylan Bundy turns into that for you. Um, Dude, Ivan Nova started 29 games in 2007, uh, in 2018. Where the fuck am I? I lost my spot. You are lost. Okay. So in 17, he started 31 games. In 18, he started 29. In 19, he started 34. In 16, he started 26. So the last four years, he's pitched 26, 31, 29, 34, 162 innings, 187 innings, 161, 187. Dude eats up innings. And he had a, I mean, he had a 4.72 ERA last year, but it, that he was bad and then he had a good stretch. But, yeah. but the year before that, 4.19 and 4.14. And four. I know a lot of people compare everyone to the best ever. Sure. We're thinking of him as a four or five guy. Yeah. So if your four or five goes out there and gives you 30 starts on the year with a four point under 4.5 ERA, a you're for anything you're going to take that. And this dude's worth 1.5 million and no prospects. And Bundy was worth Can 5 million and four. I'm with you. Can I see that? And that's what I was trying to say. And that's, when you were discussing it, you were you said you wanted to see the other free agent options to see how they played out. And I think we... Does your phone not click? What's going on here? What are you trying to do? Like, if you click on my baseball reference, like, you can highlight stuff. You don't have a clicky phone, huh? I do, but... Damn. 
Well, let's. I'll do some turkey math. Dylan Bundy, the last two Are years. Are you logged in on your phone? See, um, maybe. I don't think so. Dylan Bundy, the last two years, 61 starts, a 5-1-3 ERA, 333 innings. Ivan Nova, what are we going to say? A 4-4-4? Four, four, four? I was going to go 4-3-8. 4-3-8. <laughs> we're just guessing on these numbers, but that's what we do. But, yeah, that's, that's my whole case is that you could have gotten Dylan Bundy types for cheaper. Um, and, again, he's got we, – we heard after that that his analytics and his slider and stuff are good. Here I am going on about Dylan Bundy. Don't care. Good for the Tigers. Nova, pitch well, get traded at the deadline. Problem solved. That'd be cool for Nova. For which I, – I'll report it now. Ivan Nova, Ivan Nova traded to Texas – for whichever one of their pitchers struggles this year, not not, not for, for that to guy. replace, replace him yes. to replace him to replace him in the lineup. Jake Been hated there. it. That's why he left. That's not true. I had a lot of fun. I, Dallas Fort Worth. You're either it's either two years or you're there for life. And I I had fun in my two years. A lot of drinks, drank, drank. Town's changed a lot, man. Deep Ellum is now the spot. Wow. Nobody hangs out in Uptown anymore. Damn bummer. Talking Dallas. Is this usually the intro song? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's not a good. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You seeing that? Look how bad I look there. We are changing the subject. We did the real baseball talk, and now it's time to dive back into the biggest scandal in sports. The the story that's dominating the headlines that we thought was coming to a close and decided that, no, it wasn't ready to close. Alex Cora gets fired, Jake. And we haven't heard what his no, actual no, punishment is. No, 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 you get fired. Whatever. <laughs> I think I think eventually like someone slipped in the press, press conference yeah. and like said the word fired. And they're like, well, I thought you guys uh, mutually agreed to part ways. Yeah, that was uh, our, our guy, Brendan Cuddy, that covers the Yankees for, what are they calling it now? NJ.com? Yeah, NJ.com. He, uh, he's, he's got a... It's called NotJake.com. He, that's he a had, bad joke. He has fun. That's a bad joke. He has fun on the Twitter sphere and <laughs> with Beltran and Cora. <laughs> it's like, these guys were fired. Yeah. <laughs> these guys were fired. Because if this didn't happen, it, they wouldn't be mutually parting. So, nice. Um, we w- talked about Beltran uh, last episode with Ploof because I, I said I didn't think it was necessary. You guys said, like, yeah, it's kind of necessary. Cora... Uh, he might get the biggest punishment here. Yeah. And if anyone doesn't understand why or whatever, it's because, so to go back to our analogy, which I, I love so much that the Red Sox were caught going five over the speed limit. The Astros were caught going 50 miles over the speed limit, right. but Cora had been previously caught going five over and they were to- and the Red Sox were told not to do it again. Right. They did it again, and Cora is now a repeat offender because he was named in the report from the Astros uh, yeah. report. Like, you know, he was one of the names stated. So now they, they're p- kind of pinning it all on him. Yeah. Interested to see what his the, suspension's going to be. Re- from the report, you saw him as the bench coach. Yeah. The bench coach. Yeah. Oh, in, in Manfred's report, he yeah. refers to them as general and field general. <laughs> Shut up, dude. What are you doing? No. <laughs> That's like you play like when you're playing toys. You yeah, know? we're like, still Civil War ended. You don't have to call him General and Field General. <laughs> he was like, when I laid down the warnings in 2007, I said that any discipline would fall on the General and the Field General, and I cannot backtrack from that. So the discipline will fall on the Field General and the General. And it's like call them man, uh, call them GM and manager. No, dude, it, it, what are you doing? L- Lunau's Lunau's listed him as the bench coach. Luna listed him as the bench Luna coach. Listed. Yeah, he that's didn't do that's the one I was thinking of. So we, we don't know, know what, who it was, Jeff. <laughs> you can put the name. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Uh, okay. Uh, I think. Did you hear that Veritech said? Uh, was it Veritech? Lowell. Lowell said. Lowell said it'll bridge the gap. I'll manage until Core is unsuspended. Nice. He can come back. Perfect. That's what you need. That's exactly what baseball wants, and the Red Sox. Uh, well, whatever. I don't really have any thoughts on that. If they they wanted that, just have them serve the suspension. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Lol. You dummy. Use that brain of yours. And then the the buzzers thing intensified. Jake, did you know that Astros fans think I single-handedly made up the buzzers? You did. It was all you. 
It, it is wild. And we've talked about this on some other podcasts. Like Joel Sherman slyly mentioned them. So here's this order of events. Trevor Bauer, has, who's been doing the media circuit to kind of puff his chest a little bit because he was on the forefront. He had heard about the The buzzers were around. The buzzers were the buzz around buzz, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Well, yeah, because well, I said on Talking Baseball, like I heard something that changes everything. Right. But I'm not going to say it unless it gets broken. The very next day, Joel Sherman puts it in his article, says yeah. rumors that there was buzzers being used. So I was like, oh, okay, that's it. That's what I heard as well. Joel heard it from someone. Yeah. It's a rumor. It's out there. There's no, there's no proof. There's no hard evidence. The only way we'll ever, it'll be confirmed is that they do an investigation. Now, MLB did their investigation and they said there was nothing found in 2018 and 2019. And I think that's MLB intentionally being lazy and not finding anything from 2018, 2019. Common sense, it doesn't add up. You say, we win the World Series with this cheating mechanism that proven to have been used. We're, we're past speculation. Right. Proven to have been used. Proven in MLB's report to have been used in the pl- playoffs. Yeah. So they used, they'd win the World Series. Now they're going to grow a conscious. And right. Like, you know, no, they're going to try and win again. Uh, that's just common sense in my brain. So whatever. But, and then... What uh, do you think? Because uh, a couple Astros, because they did Astro Day or whatever, and they denied... They actually did deny the buzzers. Bregman did. It's Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the first time they've come out and said... Yeah. No to something. They also so probably would have just de- you denied think they, you, the banging as well. You think they just call the buzzers by another name? <laughs> Semantics, honestly. Yeah. We can talk about Bregman and Altuve's quotes. I, I want your. I want the Jimmy. This is one of my favorite meters because it, it's usually all over the board. I'll be honest with you. What's your percent chance that there are no buzzers? The buzzers do not exist. Like, maybe there's other forms of cheating. Like, maybe they just went to whistling, and maybe there's something else. What are the chance that the buzzers, which I think every everyone around baseball, except the teenager Houston fans on Twitter, agree that's, like, as egregious as it gets. Like, everyone's been saying if the buzzer stuff is true, like, down Dude, with I the I mean, union. you're making me put a dumb, random ass I know. This, this is why it's my favorite and scale. People are going to quote it, and it's like, this is bad ESPN. It's just your opinion. Thing. It's You're not reporting or breaking anything. This is opinion. This is when you're in the clear. There, It's heavily rumored. Okay. So I'm not going to be surprised if it's true. I hope it's not. Um, hmm. Like, there's no confirmation. But there but there are some shady things around it. So I don't know. I, I mean, I, the people that tell me... Don't say, I know 100%. Right. They're saying, I heard that rumor too. That rumor's been circulating for a while. Sure. So would it shock me if there are none? No. But would it shock me if they are? No. Percent. So, not doing it. Damn, you suck. Um, That's some Stephen A. shit. Page out of my book. That's why it's always fun, man. Um, Stephen A's the best. That was a comment in the chat. Core is about to get lifetime. It'd be hilarious if Michael Lowell took the job as the bridge <laughs> and then Core got a lifetime ban. Yeah. Oops. So now I'm here. I'd be genius. Well, I, I did a good job. Or if he doesn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Um, the, the comments from Bragman and Altuve, they were, they were clearly coached, right? Yeah. Like you, you, you get told what to say by your PR team. And I, and I understand, you know, denying the buzzards heavily. Because MLB came out and said they didn't find any, but why? They why was that what they got coached? <laughs> they got coached to deny everything, and like some yeah. people are like, "That's how you do it, lawyers." But it's a bad look. It's a really bad look. And like, there's tons of athletic articles, art articles from all over, opinions from all over. Be like, "That's terrible." Like you were proven right and punished to be cheated, and people are saying, "Well, you know, their names weren't on the list." Well, they got amnesty from the MLB. Their names weren't on the list, but we have all the video of who used it. We've seen Altuve at bats where he benefited from the banging. We've seen uh, Bregman at bats where he benefited from the banging. So it's it's not like you're like obviously, dude. They were part of the scheme. So why do they need to keep their mouths clear? I think it's a PR dumb move. I think it would have been much better. Like Carrick, Carrick had a bunch of of good like what would have been good to say. Yeah, that they didn't say it's proven that they cheated via the bang scheme in 2017, and they still acted like I have no comment on that. I have no right. I mean, it. You're right. It is. It's proven that the Houston Astros cheated. 
it's technically not proven that Alex Bregman cheated. So that's why they're going to say those generic lines. And if you're one of the wisers, you're, you're going to know. But a lot of people aren't, <laughs> as you found out through the internet. So people will just be like, they'll shrug and be like, oh, yeah, I think he's guilty. But if Alex Bregman, once, once those words come out of their mouths, it does change for them, which is dumb. But that's how society works. It would have been so much better. Here was uh, Mark Kariggs, uh like examples of what maybe the PR should have coached him to say. We're sorry for damaging the game of baseball. We screwed other players, our bad. Or maybe even we realized that this was wrong and we used poor judgment, but I hope it doesn't completely destroy what we accomplished. Like that that probably what I would have if I was ahead of PR. Yeah, I think the first ones are are half joking on his part because he doesn't believe those. But that last one. The is last one's like, not bad. Yeah. We realized that this was wrong. We skirted the rules and then we took it too far. We used poor judgment got away from ourselves. I hope this doesn't completely destroy everything we've accomplished and doesn't taint everything we are going to accomplish moving forward. Bam. You know what they're America loves? They're never going to say that. That's what I need to warn you about. <laughs> yeah, but they're just going to be hated forever. Like, yeah. America loves an apology. America loves someone that shows regret and remorse. Think of everyone. A-Rod's back in America's good yeah, graces. and they will Tiger eventually. Tiger got back in America's good graces. They will eventually. You just said they never would. They'll get in their good graces eventually. They would have to... They would have to apologize. Yeah. I mean, we we went on short porch the other day, and Tommy Sibbs said A-Rod never, <laughs> never, uh, never failed a drug test. So people... Well, he was joking. Well, yeah. It's yeah. A-Rod. They'll have to apologize. It was just a weird move. I mean, that's... They kind of made things worse. Especially Bregman saying the Astros made their decision. Yeah. He's not part of the Astros. Well, it's, it takes a lot to say that the commissioner gave his report, and he said that. So I give him that. Yeah, I mean, he just started laughing while he was saying it at the end, too. Yeah, because like, that's the PR line he was given, yeah. and so he was just going to crank that out. How do you feel about Otuve using the underdog approach? I mean, it's hilarious. It's, uh, it's, it, it's Altuve, and I mean, that's the – underdog is such the worst word for it. Um what what they need, and you know I've been hammering the table on the stance, and it's why I don't want them to get Buck Showalter, and you, you cracked a funny, which maybe we'll get to in a second, but whoever becomes the manager of the Astros needs them to get a massive chip on their shoulder, and they've got guys that can do that. They've Bregman always kind of lives that way. Um, Altuve, Springer, all, all the guys on that team, if they lean into this and go full heel, chip on their shoulder like because guess what everyone this this <laughs> our dream is that the Astros suck this year they're still really good all those guys are freaking <laughs> freaking good at baseball and if they have a manager that leans in and says have a chip on your shoulder go show the world how good you guys are and if you actually believe in those quotes that you didn't need it or or you're going to pretend you didn't use it then go show the world this year and I think Buck Showalter would bring that out. What, what, what was the Buck Showalter joke you made about no technology? <laughs> oh, I think that was Joe's or someone said that. Was it? It wasn't me. It was someone we were with. They were joking that Buck's going to go back old school. Like no iPads, no cell like, phones no in the TVs building. No in the no locker TVs. room. Like Buck would be old and crazy enough to do that. And I think it would actually work. Who, who just showed up uh, to interview? Dusty? Yeah. Did Dusty, he interview Dusty with ba Houston? Dusty Baker. Because I think he interviewed with the Mets too. Dude, um, it's so interesting because all the other teams usually have to give their assistant coaches approval to go get these yeah. interviews. But we're a couple weeks away from spring training and they're like, no, uh, we need him. Yeah. He's our bench coach. If you want, like, if we let him interview and you make him your head coach, we're out of bed, bench coach. So they're, they're like slim pickings. Yeah. It's all guys that are currently not attached to a team. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Three spots need to get filled. God. Who's out? Buck? Dusty? Who else is even being rumored? Like a, all sp the, a spotter? All the Red Sox guys being rumored are just former like Red Sox favorites. guys and just, Ron Renneke. Just mascots. Veritek yeah. and Lowell. Wally. Yeah. Hello, Give Wally Backman the, the Mets job. He's been blackballed for too long. Green monster, Wally. I know, but you made me think of Wally Backman. Okay, give, give Wally the, Backman the job. Come on, just do it. Come on. Why do you guys hate him so much? Jake, who do we have left? Uh, what free agents do we have left? We still have Castellanos. We still have Puig. 
Castellanos, Puig. Um, there's one other righty. Uh, Marcelo Zuna, right? He hasn't signed yet. Um, so, yeah, there's three kind of righty impact bats to different degrees. Castellanos just slaughters lefties. Ozuna is a violent bat whenever he's up there, and Puig's always a threat. <laughs> you're going to have awesome weeks, and you're going to have terrible weeks. Um, it's kind of cool that, you know, this offseason, besides the Astro stuff, just the actual signing of guys is good. Yes. Like we are almost all teams are set. We have a handful of guys left to find homes, and we're just roll it. Yeah. Spring training. We're not going to have to open that camp up for free agents. You're not going to have to worry about Keuchel and Gonzalez waiting out the draft picks. It's been a good off season for baseball. Good off season. I mean, it's the cheating. So I still think the attention it brought to baseball is still good. Uh, the, it is. There's a lot of bad attack. Yeah, I think I think it's bad for baseball. <laughs> I think I think for attention to the game it's it's good, but if the negative attention, I don't know. You could go in circles with that all day. Here's who hasn't signed, and signed. left. Ozuna, Castellanos, mm. Puig. Don't go to Japan, Puig. Don't do it. Dozier, Kevin Pillar, Wilmer Flores, Steven Souza Jr., mm. Julis Chassain, Addison Russell. Jason Kipnis, Matt Duffy, Taiwan Walker, Alex Gordon. He's going back to Kansas, right? Sure. I think he will. Russell Martin. Reported. Felix Hernandez, Jason Vargas, Brock Holt, Mitch Moreland. It's a lot of names that we know, and I'm like, wait, would it be terrible if they don't get major league jobs? If they get minor league? I don't know where the scale is in a lot of these guys. Jared Dyson, he'll get invited to someone's minor league camp. Someone should sign Russell Martin as a reliever. Yes. 0.00 ERA last year, like four outings. Speaking of, Fernando Rodney. I mean, if he doesn't get a job, cancel the season. He'll get a job. The first team that have a a back-end reliever go down. Bam, Fernando Rodney. Like Rodney. Well, the Nationals did it last year before we appreciated them as the the World Series champs. Fernando Rodney and Sergio Romo are the guys that every year, if your team is looking for bullpen help, you go out and get them and say, hey, if they get you a little bit of that magic, Chris Collinsworth is in the booth for the baseball game then. Um, but yeah. Cool. Anything else? How many pitches has Rodney thrown since the World Series? He was playing in the Dominican. I know. Like a, a thousand? That's why I think he might not, like he might not care about MLB season yet. Like he needs the Dominican season to finish before he can think about MLB. Dude, just pitches. Just pitches. That's what he does. Got nothing better to do. Well, it's his career. It's what he's it's really, also his career. It's what he's really, really good, good at it. Yeah, so. he's really good at it. He probably could do other things, but he loves pitching. I don't know. He could like read to his kids all day, all day. Boring. It's not as all fun day. as pitching. Wow, I'm gonna remind you that when you have kids, all day. No, three bucks. Okay. Okay. Got the quote. Anything else? I don't think so. Someone mentioned Hall of Fame stuff. We're going to find out about that tomorrow. I might let you go on that. I know that I do talk in baseball. I, 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 I can't. This is I, a classic. You don't care until the results out. If someone's yeah. in, cool. If not, yes. also cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Larry Walker's the big one. He's going to be so close. Um, I think he's going to get in. Is he a Hall of Famer? Yeah, there's, there's some good numbers there. And, Jimmy, something that you and I... Um, really fell into this year is the whole cores effect stuff and people, not enough people. And I was telling my Rockies guys this, they need to spread the word on what happens when the Rockies leave course field. You didn't believe it at first. No, no. And that's why I said they need to spread the word. I, I said, I wanted to see more evidence. And as I got into it, I was like, Holy smokes. But, um, yeah, I mean, his, his OPS is crazy. He was a good fielder. Um, I, I've been getting in some heated Larry Walker, Derek Jeter debates, stand where you want on that, but Derek Jeter's better. Um, Larry Walker's an awesome ball player. Uh, the Rockies people get passionate about it cause they lean into him as their guys. Cause not a lot of exposed people still can. Um, he, he should be in, he's, he's got some impressive numbers out there. And again, if you don't know about the core stuff, look into it because yes, they're going to rake at cores, but when they go on the road, it's a nightmare. Um, can't wait to get older because yeah. I didn't watch baseball religiously from when did he play? 
89 to 2005. When I started watching the, like, every single day, because I lived in Australia, I lived in right. Illinois. It's like 2004. Like, a Yankee fan, I would watch the playoffs, I would watch right. big games, but every day watching baseball, knowing other teams, 2004. So I don't, I don't, I have no opinion on Larry Walker. I never, I, all I could do is look back at his stats, which, yes, are very impressive. But Hall of Fame voting for me, stats come into play. It, it's a gut feel. Right. It's like, <clears throat> hey, you watch that guy play, like you were around the sport for that decade. Was he a dude? Right. For 10 years, was he uh, like, oh, shit. Right. That's Larry Walker. And that's. And so I, I have no idea. I, he could have been. He could not have been. I didn't. I didn't pay attention closely. So that's why, like, all these young kids on Twitter going, like, hard. Yeah. Into caring and not caring about guys who, like, like, just being honest, you didn't watch play. Right. Or it's not even because, like, you can't watch every game of every team. But you didn't know the vibe. Right. And the strictly analytics people are going to hate this whole take. Sure. But for me, Hall of Fame is just very gut feel. Like you hear the name, you're like, hmm. And it's it, it's funny if you dig into because the the big boys have been releasing their ballots recently. Uh, Jason Stark, um, I I don't give Jason Stark en- enough love as one of the short baseball god riders. Go check out his piece he wrote on his Hall of Fame ballot. I can barely read. Um, took me hours to get through it. No, but it's so well written and. There are feel aspects to it that if you are one of these analytics people, like we welcome you in analytics are cool, but the feel will always be there. And it's so well written because guess what? It is, it is his feelings, but he's using analytics. And I think you'll read through that. Like he mentions Jeter and there's, uh, he just has one quick line in there and he's like, it's Derek Jeter. He's a hall of famer. (laughs) Like you don't, you, there's some stuff you cannot overthink. Um, but yeah, I, I'm hoping Larry gets in cause he, he really does have some impressive stuff. Um, we'll see the steroid guys. It's going to be interesting to see where they land. They got a lot of votes. Um, so I don't know. I hope, uh, I mean, either way, when any award gets announced, there's going to be somebody screaming about something. Hopefully, hopefully tomorrow is a good day for baseball. I think it will be. I think we're going to get some awesome names in the hall of fame. Cool. Great. Sounds good. Uh, stay tuned. Jake's traveling back to Denver. We're building this office. Uh, we'll we will be keeping the episodes as regular as possible, uh, but like you know, news might be slower. Maybe we we'll have to try and uh, try and get some topics and shit like that. We got what do we got? Three more big signings, spring yeah. training approach, and we'll get something. Yep. Core suspension. Yep. All right. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate you. Thank you. Special shout out to the patrons watching live with us. See you later.